Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel and you will get a visit from a shrouded ghost. I don't make the rules. I just get told that's what happens. Anyway. So welcome back to another video in the Rare Tip series. There's a few of them I've made so far. Very soon, I'm going to make a massive, you know, compilation of all the videos I've made and expect a few more of these to come in the future. If you do have any cool rare tips that you think people should know, post them down in the comment section. And as well as that, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Leave a like if you'd like to show your support and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. I also do many giveaways on Twitch if you are interested. Make sure you check it out. It is linked in the description. I'm going to let you guys go. We're going to get into the first tip. Sit back, relax. Hopefully you learn something new and I'll see you guys at the end of the video. So the first tip of today's video is addressing on something that I made in my first video of this series. Uh, in the first video, I showed you you can auto run by using number lock on a mouse and keyboard. Uh, a lot of the controller players were upset that they couldn't do it on the uh, controller and it's only a mouse and keyboard thing. But I've since found out that you can actually do it on the controller. So first of all, uh, if you didn't see the first video, pressing number lock after running is going to allow you to auto sprint. And if you can auto sprint, it just makes your life a little bit easier. You can do things like automatically swim to afford the dam you're going to steal. Or you can uh, say you want to automatically raise an anchor or something like that. It's got a lot of uses, okay? A lot of subjective uses, but the uses nonetheless. Switching over to my controller now, as you can see. Um, if you actually go into your settings, you go to... Or if you're on an Xbox, you won't have that keyboard and mouse section. But if you're on a, on a controller, you can actually see this thing called auto move here, okay? Find that up on the uh, up on the D-pad, and you can auto sprint without having to press your analog stick at all. I mean, of course, you're gonna have to press analog stick to to um, what's the word? Like look around for. But you can even just like walk by pressing D-pad up now. And then, of course, D-pad up. You press left stick to sprint, and there you go. You've got an auto run feature. So this is really useful as well. Honestly, it's even easier on the controller than it is on the mouse and keyboard. Nevertheless, though, hopefully this helps you guys. And hopefully now if you're on a controller, you can auto sprint. You don't have to worry about not having the ability to do so. Another tip for the appointed bilge rats of each crew. This one's going to help you out if you're on a sloop. Uh, although a sloop is really easy to bail, I'm going to show you some ways that's going to make it a lot easier. So just briefly though, if you do remember any of the other videos of this series again, uh, I've showed you how to essentially effectively bail on every boat aside from a sloop. Never really showed you the right way to effectively bail on a sloop, but I'm going to show you right here, right now in this video, and hopefully you're going to use it with great, uh, with great ease, assuming you need to keep a sloop alive. So, it's going to involve the staircase yet again, so let's go ahead and assume that you have, you know, a, a mostly filled bottom deck on a sloop, which does happen to the best of us. Now, if you do stand on the second step yet again, right, and then you walk forward, you can actually bail out of your boat in the same spot. You can look down, you can look up, you can look down, and you can look up. The other way you can bail on a sloop as well is by throwing out of the windows, you know. Uh, it's a little bit slower. This is really easy. You just stand on the second step, right? Pick up, throw, pick up, throw. Real easy. There's absolutely no brain to it. You do want to worry, though, when it starts to get up to about the, uh, the fourth step there, Whenever you do throw water, it's going to put water back in the boat. So you're going to want to stop doing this method once it gets up to the fourth step. Otherwise, you're going to run the risk of being able to sink your boat. And nobody wants to sink their boat accidentally, especially if you are a pointed bilge. And even more so if you are solo slooping and you're getting destroyed by a bigger crew or just someone who's way better than you on a sloop as well. Hopefully that helps. There's a cool little sloop bilge tip. Use it with great, great power. The next rare tip, uh, this is well known if you're a content creator, but if you're not a content creator, you know, you might not know this. And it was even official, it was even official statement from Rare, right? People were talking about whether or not it's an exploit or whatever, but Rare gave the green light, they said it's okay to do, so I'm showing you that in this video. Now, say you're a Reaper 5, I'm obviously not because I just loaded into the server for the sake of recording this, right? But say you're a Reaper 5, okay, and you want to take down all of the boats in this server, so you do that. Then you find the server's empty, but you want to keep playing and you don't want to get another Reaper's Fire back up to find all the other emissaries in the next server. With the use of the Pirate's Life Tooltail, either Tooltail 1 or Tooltail 3, right? The ones that take you into another dimension. The ones that take you into this dimension here, okay? That's what you need. So if you go ahead and place that down, okay? 
I'm going to use... I think it's a Reaper's Chest in the server. I'm going to use this Reaper's Chest. Yeah, it's over there to the, uh, the southeast. I'm going to use this for, uh, I guess, a showcase, right, of how it works. So, you've cleared out the server. You want to go to a new one, okay? Simply, what you need to do is get either Tooltail 1 or Tooltail 3 of the Paris Life franchise and go through that portal. When you do go through the portal, you can cancel the tool tail. When you do cancel the tool tail, it's gonna put you into a brand new server. And for some reason, it seems like every time you get put into a server, it has content going, right? It's never gonna spawn you into a fresh server that is just spawned in, like a, a server that you created, a bunch of others created by joining. It's gonna throw you into a server that's already full and just has a free spot. I feel like the reason you usually get good servers doing this method is because you're going to find when people get killed and they have a lot of loot, most of the time they're going to leave the game okay and when they leave a the game it means the ship becomes open in the server and because of that you get auto filled into the already full server okay that's the most likely reason as to why you're going to find more content on this server. but i'm going to stop this part of the video here i'm going to pick it up in just a moment and if you remember the location of that box that we had you can see we're going to go into a brand new server and it's going to be either not there or in a different location because it's going to be a completely different server nevertheless i'll see you guys in like two seconds so here we are we've just made it through the first section of the uh of the what i call the disney jump right the only downside to this is that it is a very 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 long process getting into the other server no matter how good your pc is you've got to go through this sort of like load scene that you've just seen if you've done this friend uh, if you've done the the tool tales of the new series you'll know this but um what you want to do once you make it into wherever you are in the other one on the other realm simply vote to cancel the voyage and you're going to get kicked out of the realm okay one more time and i mean this for the last time you're going to be going through the this animation in here the sea of the damned uh i won't show you too much or mention too much in case you haven't done this and you want to experience it for yourself but it's going to put you back into this location and in a second we're going to come back and you're going to see we're going to be in a uh in a in a brand new area well new server not brand new area you get the idea Right, so here we go. We're at the end of the uh, of this segment. At this point, you're going into the main game, right? You've left the uh, the Tooltail world. You see, we still have the Reaper One flag, and we're going into the new server. This is the final time you're going to have to see this load sequence. Uh, it takes about five minutes. This entire thing, maybe a little bit less. I haven't timed it, but it sure as heck is quicker than going into a new server, re-getting Reapers Five back up, and uh, essentially starting back from scratch. So you'll notice now we've gone into a new server. Uh, the main thing we're going to look for again was that Reaper's box down at Ashram Reaches. You can see it's not there. There's a new Reaper's box here indicating that we're in a complete new server. To show that that hasn't been picked up and someone's moved it, there's the little beam, right? We're in a brand new server, brand new place, and we've still got our Reaper's one flag. The one thing I didn't mention but is still definitely worth mentioning though is even though we've left that server, all the loot and the actual Reapers 1 flag itself is in the water on that other server, which means someone can chase you and steal all your stuff, meaning running through a portal if you are getting killed or chased is never a good idea as you're still going to have your loot given up to the person who's chasing you. They get it anyway. It all drops behind you. The only thing that doesn't drop behind you is storage traits and other cool things like that. Anyway, hopefully you guys learned something new. I know a few people do know that trick, but nevertheless, that's how you, want, that's how you can get through servers, right? If you... Uh, don't want to go back and praise the Reapers 5 again.